feel like you need to come back from the commercial break burping. That's kind of like <laughs> yeah, exactly you got what the should happen. On. <laughs> I tried to keep my mouth closed, but it came out my nose. <laughs> Whoops! It's really bubbly. So you like coffee? Right? Yeah, I love coffee. Cool. I have a gift for you. Oh, what is this? Minimum wage Tim's coffee from Papua New Guinea. Oh hell Some yeah! Whole Let's bean coffee go. for you. Yeah, it's a friend of mine over in Minneapolis. Um, okay. He went to college here, and he does this boutique coffee brand. It's pretty dope. And we started doing this thing um, where I get to give a bag of coffee to the guest, and then people listening um, can win a free bag. So he gives away a free bag. So oh, you have to go cool. on Instagram, follow Minimum Wage Tims, and DM him. This is the password this time. Mm. May it rise and rise. If you DM that, he just picks one of the people that DMs him and then mails them a whole uh, coffee to their house. You know what's cool is that um, one of my best friends in the world named Elvin, uh, a lot of mornings when I'm not on the road doing comedy, has a place called Bar Francis in Olympia, Washington. It's like this tiny little coffee shop. Yeah. And I go in there and I hang out with my friend Larissa, who's like a, a painter. Yeah. Um, friends that are like poets, and I hang out with like a lot of rappers. Hang out sure. with some skateboarders. Cool, you know. Yeah, yeah Olympia is a fun little town like that. I don't hang out with a lot of other comics. There's just not a lot of comics around. Sure, we get a kick out. Of I think it's other. good though to like pull yourself out of. If you're too tunnel vision in one spot all the time, mm -hmm. I feel like you don't end up having like, I don't know, nothing's creative then because you're just yeah. too like into one thing you know what i'm saying yeah like even with painting and stuff for me like if i'm getting stuck on creative block and stuff what helps the most is to not be painting yeah like yeah, do yeah. something else i think that helps quite a bit yeah so what are you working on right now you right you have one comedy special out that yeah. you sent me i watched it on, did you uh, like it yeah it was it was hilarious it was Good, great and it was what, like it. three bucks or something on amazon so everyone yeah, should yeah, go yeah. check that out what is it called it's sam miller it's called what? round trip round trip there you go yeah and you can buy my album at the stand-up records website if you want vinyl oh sick cool. the art on the album um, was drawn by Pat Moriarty. He used to work with Robert Crumb in Mad Magazine. Cool. We've become really good friends. We're working on a book together, too, where he's, he's illustrated a bunch of my one-liner jokes. And then I write a lot. <laughs> oh, cool. I write um, not funny stuff, too. I oh, just sure. write, I write about being a comedian out on the road, and I write about what it's like you know, being in a world that's like, not designed for for me. Sure. <laughs> so I feel like that's a lot of parallels to Sam Talent. Did you read his book too? Yeah, I did read Sam Talent's book. Sam Talent's book is one of my favorite things in the world. Yeah, it's about... Did um, you read his book? I have not read it yet. Dude. I interviewed him not crazy long ago and I never find time to oh read. Oh my God. But it was like Running the Light. And it running was about the a, Light. Yeah. It's about a stand -up. Billy Ray Schaefer. Yeah, he's a stand-up comedian we've all met. He's like a hodgepodge of like people Sam has met. Knows. Sure. It's a very good book about what it's like to be a road comic. And it's also a very good book about addiction. Sure. So. Yeah, there's there's a book like that that's similar. I interviewed this dude, Walker Ryan, who's a pro skateboarder, and he mm -hmm. lives out in uh, New York. Or I think he just moved, but he was living in New York. But he put out a couple of books. And it was a, a cool parallel to Sam's because it was about like pro skateboarding, kind of, where it has all the information of what being an actual pro skateboarder is like because yeah, he has yeah. the actual experience but it was like a fictional novel and stuff that was yeah so it's kind of a kind of a cool story so that's the thing about talent's book right is it um i know that it's fiction yeah but like you wouldn't be able to tell me it's not this is some wild stuff so i was in colorado right yeah. and i was losing my ass on this comedy tour because i was supposed to do these shows at a rehab in salt lake city so i went from salt lake city i drove to colorado the rehab shows got canceled because Omicron happened. Like, and like the rehab shut down. And right. that was like, those are like my anchor shows. Okay. It's so like whenever I do a comedy tour, I have anchor shows. But anyway, I'm losing my ass and I'm, I'm going to go to Boulder and do one more show in um, Boulder and not make money. And then like, it sucked. Yeah. Anyway, um, Sam Talent had some unfortunate stuff go down with um, his mom. And I filled in for him headlining at a show in Fort Collins. And it actually made my comedy tour work. The money wasn't great, but it was sure. pretty good. And yeah. then I sold a bunch of t-shirts. I had a really good set, good crowd, sold a bunch of shirts. And actually went from like losing money on my first comedy tour to making like 20 bucks or Sick. something. Nice. Yeah. At least you made something. I think the, the merch thing is a, a huge 
thing. You have to give, I forget who, what band I was interviewing, but I was asking them about it and they were like, you know, there's so many people out there that want to support you. They just don't know yeah. how to support you. But yeah. if you put something right in front of them, that's like, hey, this is one easy way. Yeah, yeah. You know, they like crowdsourced an album to get it done. Yeah, but like, yeah. if you put things out there like that, people want to support. And the nice thing with like t-shirts or whatever, it's like they know 100% of the money goes right to you. Yeah, you're literally yeah. Right it goes to me it. and my t-shirt guy who's also in recovery. He's dope. He's oh, like, cool. I, I use a local guy. But I was going to say that um, right after that happened for... Fort Collins, I fill in on that. Yeah. Um, and I was listening to Sam Talent's book. And uh, there's a part in the book, I don't want to give too much away, but Billy Ray Schaefer is like a pretty shitty dad. And um, I think Sam would be okay with me saying that. And uh, at one point, like, he had made his son mad, and he bought him some of those holographic Pokemon cards. Okay. And I remember one time, one of the times I made a bad decision, and I went to Portland for a guest spot on a Friday night, and I was supposed to hang out and do something with my kid that night. Yeah. And I felt bad, and I bought him some Pokemon cards, and I had to pull over my car because I was crying. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I told that to Talent, too. He liked it, man. Nice. Yeah. If you had to pick one comedian that you haven't performed with that you could go on a tour with, like I had interviewed Sean Patton recently, and he did six months with David Cross. Mm -hmm. If you could pick anybody that you haven't gone out on the road with, but you could for like the next 90 days, let's, let's forget the fact that you'd be a bad father not being home for 90 days. But other than that. If I could pick any comedian. Yeah, any comedian to go on tour with. You know what's funny man is it's probably people i already know and it's probably people that i work with a little bit you know i wouldn't mind going out with talent but i i think it, it might be too much with me and him on something together um god that's a tough question because like a lot of the like honestly like a lot of those dudes it's like they're kind of just doing their own thing and i'm kind of doing my thing you know yeah. It's weird because I don't really work with a lot of other headliners. I don't really feature for that many people. Yeah. I feel like I kind of skipped that step and I just started headlining, <laughs> which like rules. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. But um, God, probably talent. Honestly, probably talent. He's the guy He's the guy that I kind of like look up to the most. Even though um, he's like an inch shorter than you? I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm a little, he's huge, dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's probably him and it's not just because like on stage, obviously, like I really like what he does because it's, um, it's caring, but it's also subversive. Like yeah. it's this, he walks this line where, um, it's like, is this a character? Is it not a character? Like how abstract is he being right here? Is this a true story? Like at what point does like comedy like change into something else? And like almost like performance art. And then also knowing that that dude, I don't know if you talked about it on the podcast, but like. I think that dude went like a year without doing any material. Like he was just going on the road and riffing and doing crowd that. work. Yeah, dude. It was like some, I, I saw it when it was happening. I think having a balance of crowd work with like written material is yeah, kind yeah. of Yeah, yeah. I think that balance should be up to, but yeah, so probably talent. Yeah, probably talent. I'll just say Sam Talent. All right, dope. So I always ask this question on every episode. So when you do something that you're passionate about for a living, you get to have really unique experiences that are yeah. usually not financially driven in any kind of way. They're just like fucking cool. What's a story that you can share that you're really grateful for, but only happened because you chose comedy? Man, there's one I want to tell, but I'm going to cry, but that's all right. Um, and it actually wasn't even that long ago. Um, so I went down to Redding. It was two weeks ago. I went down to Redding, California, um, and I was doing comedy at an AA convention. And so those are other people in recovery, and it makes me really happy, and it's like my favorite thing to do in the world. And I can say that it's an AA venture because I'm not like, I wasn't attending as like a member. I was, I was performing, you know, and, uh, it, uh, Shasta Winterfest and that was a Saturday night. So I drove eight hours to get down there, you know, after performing in Mount Vernon, which is like two and a half hours North of Wash of Olympia. Yeah. So I told my wife, I was like, Hey, I want to go out to Eureka. I want to go out to the Redwoods. Um, Savage Henry comedy club is like one of the first comedy clubs that ever headlined me. And I messaged Chris and I was like, yo, Chris, like I got an open Sunday. I just want to come out there like money, whatever. I don't really give a shit. We can sure. just do whatever happens. And I basically closed out an open mic and there was a good crowd there, you know, but what it was for me is that I got to go do something just because I wanted to do it. Not because I was chasing a bag or whatever. Yeah. So I went over highway 36 through the mountains. And then, um, the next day I went up the Oregon coast and, um, I lost a, a good friend of mine overdosed about a month ago and it was really messy at the end and it included me 
and um, I drove up the Oregon coast and I stopped at this place called Devil's Churn. It's an amazing like natural feature and it's very violent um, but also incredibly natural you know and there was a a log spinning in this cauldron of like breakers and waves and I watched that log jump up and smash off a chunk of rock and it fell into the water and I realized that you know we think about erosion as like this long process but there it was and I thought that like in a weird way like we're all kind of shorelines and that the water is water is time and that we only have like so long and that um my friend justin um what happened with me and him at the end like i said it was real messy um that's it wasn't personal um and that i got to say goodbye to my friend justin out on the oregon coast and that was um it's hard to explain, but I had to go up the coast that day, and I got to say goodbye to Justin. And uh, I'm still in the process of saying goodbye to Justin. Yeah, I love the fact that like I'm clean and sober, and I love the fact that like I get to do stand up. But there's like a lot of guilt sometimes because like I'm kind of like the guy who got out of the shipwreck, and a lot of people are dying right now, and it yeah. fucking sucks. I didn't mean to swear. I no, I haven't said the f words thus far. I think I've said shit twice. That's three times. <laughs> um, I work clean, so I, like I I do work clean sometimes. Yeah, like I don't okay. do it unless I have to, yeah. <laughs> but I sure. can. Yeah. Um, but basically, like, I don't represent. Like, I am not all drug addicts. Uh, I am not all unhoused people. There's lots of people that had it way worse than me. In fact, I would say the majority of people that are unhoused have had it worse than me because I was raised middle class and I basically had a place to run and hide to when I was ready to figure it out, you know? Yeah. And, um, anyway, um, I like to say that because I want people to know that there's like lots of ways to get to the, like the same place and like nobody gets to like, nobody gets to tell me yeah. like what it should feel like and I don't get to tell them and like the, the, like a lot of times like what makes like a tragedy or what makes like a a good ending yeah it all has to do with perspective sure and i'm not trying to say that like what happened to justin wasn't like a tragedy it was it bums me out but also like um my story like of what i can control in my life like i can decide like how this goes to a certain point you know and i can do that by 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 working hard and trying to be a good dad and a good husband and a good comedian and that's what i'm doing you know and that's what justin would like me to do yeah sometimes i mean it's things like that where it's like empowering a little bit of this person can't do it but now i can do it more because Mm -hmm. of you know what i mean for them in a way like not necessarily for them but I, i get what you're saying yeah yeah and it's cool like very few people's careers allow them the freedom to do anything like that you know what i mean they never get to go do Dude, anything like that their whole lives really if i wasn't picking that one man like driving from like salt lake city to colorado you know it's funny i listened to talent's answer about him and david bory yeah uh and <laughs> going into and i had a similar situation to that driving from salt lake city to denver actually on that same run where i lost my ass almost yeah um where like seeing like Moab and red rocks for the first time. I've never seen rocks that color in my life. It looks like Mars. Yeah. Watching the sun come up over that and just like realizing, and that was even before, like, I don't think, I think I still didn't go full time for another four months or something. I was like, before I was doing comedy as my full time gig, it was more like a trial run. Oh, sure. You know? Well, at least you sold those t-shirts at the end to give you the confidence. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't give up. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. Thanks so much for coming on the show, man. What do we, um, where can people go find you on man, all the things? Is Facebook the biggest one for you? It is, but my Instagram's doing good too. It's just Sam Miller Comedian on Instagram, Sam Miller Comedy on Facebook, SamMillerComedy.com. There's always like a, uh, there's always like a list of shows I have coming up. Can stuff people buy like the t shirts and vinyls there too? They no? can. Um, they can. Every once in a while, if you ever see me, by the way, if you ever see me and I'm online and I'm like, Hey, you could buy a t-shirt on my website. That means I need money. (laughs) Because otherwise, like, it's it's kind of like a thing to, like, mail stuff. But how about this? 
if you follow me online and if you ever see me being like, hey, if you want to buy a t-shirt online, that'd be awesome. Because, like, I'm really obsessed. Like, I know that sometimes people need help. And, like, GoFundMe is like, I get it. The world's on fire. Like, right. if you can ask for help and you need help, I get it. But, like, I, I can't. Like, I've been so blessed. And, like, I have such a great opportunity, you know, that, like, I don't feel right being like, yo, like. Give it to me for free. Please help. Like yeah. I can, I knew, I know what I need to do. No, I, just, I feel the same way. I got to work. Yeah. No, I feel the same way. You got to present somebody like people want to help, but I still yeah. just like for free. It's pretty hard. I mean, I no. have something like being the podcast. We do like a Patreon and stuff, right? Yeah, Where yeah, I do yeah. put in the extra work. People are donating to it, but they're also listening to the show all the time. So That's I feel good. like it's bringing its, you know, its own value in that way. But I also have merchandise available on yeah. passionpod.org. It's all, yeah. It's People all tip me after shows sometimes. Do they? Yeah, it's cool. That's right. I mean, I was out uh, doing interviews in LA one time, and I posted on my Instagram story because I could use money. I was yeah. like, if anyone wants to send me money. Um, and somebody sent me like 20 bucks, and they're like, get yourself some beer and chill. Yeah. I was like, yeah. all right, cool. Yeah, like, take it easy, dude. Yeah, that, yeah. It, it worked out. Well, yeah, thanks so much. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon.